is how you go broke in the music industry. Signing contracts. I'm going up. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, okay. oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? It's like foul. Alright, grab another bottle. We gotta get a better one. Yeah. Shake it. Take. Up. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Cheers. 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 Indeed. Yeah, cheers. I was actually really happy when the guys were like, you know, I think it's time to put an album out. Because we were we were thinking about putting all money toward marking Masaba. Master of Stars and Broken Arms, or Masaba, as we call it for short. So it was an EP, seven songs. If you're in the mud. We put that out probably a couple months after we got together. This band was called The Sapiens before. When The Sapiens broke up, it was the four of us minus Mark. We weren't really getting out of it what we wanted to, um, as far as we felt like we could write poppy songs, but we didn't feel that the vocals were doing what we wanted them to do. So we ended up getting rid of our singer and auditioning singers. Once we got Mark in, we knew pretty quickly that we all excited about him. The first album that we put out uh, was a lot of the remnants from that band. They had just this wealth of instrumental track. I was just like a kid in a candy store when they brought me on. I was just, you know, listening to all this, all this music without any sort of vocals on it. And then within a couple months, we had a record. It's different from the Sapiens because it's like a lot more melodic. Everybody's really passionate about the project. Everybody feels really good and confident about the product. I'm much more a part of this new record. We all wrote it together. So it's like 100% Blaine Fonda. We're a bizarre band, we're a unique band. We get together twice a week and write music together as a quintet. We write the songs either just out of a jam, you know, you're throwing around a piece of clay and then it actually starts to look like something. So that's really cool when that happens, when you're with, in a room with four other people and somehow you all just get on the same level and it starts to actually sound like something. And maybe I'll start to hear shapes that turn into words, that turn into thoughts that turn into sentences, that turn into concepts, that turn into songs. We record stuff so we can capture good ideas. People do their homework and come back with more ideas. It's a very collaborative process. It's been, it's cool, it's really cool, especially as like a drummer to be that involved. Mark will usually come up with a melody on the spot. Like he's really creative like that. It's almost like, you know, people say like, your first idea is usually your best idea because it's your instinct. That's kind of how we, our band is. Like we all, we start writing, um, like Charlie will come up with this riff, and then we'll all start writing around it, or Matt will have a piano part, and we'll all start writing around it, and then that usually becomes the song. You know, we practice two times a week, so um, it's easy to keep momentum with a song that way. Like if, if we just jammed it and we recorded it and we liked it, then it's like, oh, okay, like I know that I need to write a guitar part for this chorus. Most of our writing is just off the cuff, and it's, you know, we're just shooting off the hip for the most part. It's like, what am I feeling like right now? And I just kind of like, whoa! And whatever comes out is what comes out. So it's not really, it's not calculated at all. It's just, you know, what kind of a day am I having? What's happened lately? I, I never write about like politics or history or anything intellectual at all. <laughs> Almost all the greatest songs of, of our history are love songs. The lyrics are mostly tales of, of courtship. Anecdotes from times that I've screwed up a good thing or uh, the other way around, or yeah, mostly love and sex. Hopefully sometimes they're funny, but most of the times they're just <laughs> pretty sad. This album will have 11 main tracks. The instrumentation's a little different. We've got Matt playing trumpets on several songs, like a classic rock type album where um, someone would want to just put it on and listen to it as 
a whole piece. Actually, the way the album's shaping out is pretty sick as far as how maybe university, universally appealing it is gonna be. With people's attention spans these days, and the, you know, everybody's like cutting EPs and like releasing singles or like a song every three months, but we're making a full-length album, which is a little different for what is like maybe the smartest financial thing to do or like the smartest, like the best bang for our buck. But I think it's gonna work really well. There's people that buy albums and love bands and only listen to the first five tracks ever, you know? So it fits, it's gonna fit that bill really well. And then people that are looking for a larger piece of art, the deeper you get into the album, like the more segues there are. So, like we take maybe a little more risks in some of the songwriting and stuff. It's so easy just to throw a piece of popcorn out to, to everybody once in a while. And it's like, here, chew on this for a second. Like release a single every few months and then tour on that. But we really want to make a piece of art, like a, a substantial chunk of our music, because it's like hard to keep up with the rate that we're writing new material. I want the, the listener to listen to this album and, and feel like they were not listening to it for an hour. Just like, where did the time go? The objective for this band is to be able to make music and not have to go to our jobs anymore. You know, We don't need to become rich and famous and drive Bentleys, but I think it would be neat to be able to tour and play music and get paid to do so. I mean, I think we deserve it. I think we work hard enough. And hopefully it'll lead us there. It's the idea. These guys are getting old. Charlie's like 46 now. And uh, like even if we did get really big, I don't think I have to really worry about it because I don't I'm not the singer. Which is great, because like I would not be good at being famous. Like like Mark is cut out for it, I'm pretty sure he could do it, but that's not my personality. But yeah, I mean unless you're like U2 or something, like no one knows. The guitarist, you're not gonna like be like, yeah, that's him, you know. I, I always wake up and, and think like, you know, you could die any day and hopefully you have something to leave behind. You know, that'd be really cool if um, several years from now people still listen to it. You know, who knows? But that's that's something that's just, you know, tickles you as an artist. 